Hi, so welcome to the third part in using Warcraft logs. In this one, we're going to have a look at the replay function, which is an absolutely brilliant feature, but often underused. And if you're looking at a typical log, you can find that by clicking on replay up here in the top right. Now, what this does in short, if we click play at the bottom left, it shows us the fight in progress. If I just pause it here, we can see you, all the players. We can see the NPCs at any particular point as well. We can click on any of these to see their health as well as what they're targeting. Whether we click on players or NPCs, we can click on the players directly on the raid frames over here. We can see what buffs and debuffs people have got active. We can see what abilities they're using even. If I click on someone, for example, we can see around here the abilities they're using. So let's just go through some of the things we can do to tidy this up before we go through what we could use this for from a practical point of view. So you may not want to see the entire raid on there. Let's say you want to strip it away and look at a few individuals. You can always click people on and off like this up here. We can do the same thing with NPCs. We can either remove them or put them back on depending on what we're looking at. We can move to different points of the fight, of course. We can have pets showing or not. And you can just comp you can click all the players off in one fell swoop here and then potentially put them on one at a time. Let's say you just want to look at one particular player. It's a lot quicker than clicking them all off individually. But let's say that we want players on there as well. We can change the speed at which it works. On standard, of course, it's replay one times. We can slow it down to half. We can speed it up to double. We can also include various things here. We can have the effects showing or not. We can have icons showing or not. We can put the meters on or not, showing the actual amount of damage at a particular point in the fight. We can have the video if there was one associated with it, but there is not, so we're gonna get rid of that. And we can also go onto the queries if we want, but we don't want that. Finally, any one time we can always see in terms of the main bosses, what their health is on as a percentage as well as an amount. So when would we want to use this? Well, there are a few things we'd want to do to check up on people. Now this can be used for one of two things. You can either use it to see how another guild tackles a boss that you are working on, or you can use it to see if the raiders in your own guild are following the strategy that you've suggested. So some of the things that are not necessarily easy to do elsewhere in the log section, but can be done very easily here, we can see extremely easy if people are moving as they should. We can see extremely easily if they're targeting the mobs that they should. So for example, if I move this to this particular point of the fight, um, I mean this one, let's have a look, Desolate Host. We're waiting for the last boss to come out, which happens when the two main bosses on this particular fight, Desolate Host, are on about 30%. So we see a new NPC come in the desolate host there. Now what we should still generally see is that people are targeting either the engine of souls or soul queen Diana. So we can easily click on DPS and see what they're targeting. So we can see here people targeting engine of souls as they should be. No one should be targeting the desolate host other than potentially a tank to bring it to where it's supposed to be. Oh, that's a healer. That'll be explaining why they're targeting a player. Okay, so everyone is targeting the correct NPC uh, as opposed to the desolate host there. But you, you would be able to see from this if you suspected someone of not hitting the right target. Sometimes you can look at the breakdown of damage on a particular target, but that doesn't tell you the full story. It might be that they are not necessarily able to do a lot of damage to a particular target. It doesn't mean to say they're not switching. Similarly, they might have a lot of damage done to it because they have a very high cleave. Doesn't mean they're switching to it and doing as much damage as they could do to it. The other thing this can be used for is movement. So the boss at this point is casting Soulbind. This is going to, on this particular fight, join two people together who have to meet. The arranged meeting point is in the middle. So once this is cast, we can see that these two players here have, that's got spirit chains, let's get the right one have the soul bind and the other one is there. So we should see them moving towards each other to break this off. So we can see moving to the middle, meeting there. 
Okay, now there is another ability that also requires people to move fairly quickly. So we can also check that when it comes around. So we can see here, Soul Queen is about to cast Wailing Souls. At this point, the people who are in the spirit phase should be moving out apart from the tank and a healer. So what we would expect to see at this point is people switching from one side to the other. So we can see at the moment that this one is in the spirit realm. So very shortly that should change. And now we can see they don't have that debuff anymore. They've moved into the normal realm. And you can check how quickly people are doing that as well. Let's say at that particular point you sort of felt there was a bit of excessive damage going out. Maybe it's because people haven't moved across quickly enough. You would be able to check that as well. Now we can also see on this particular fight again, Desolate Host, that the Desolate Host cast various abilities. One of the abilities is Doomed Sundering, which is what they're doing now. This is where one group, in this particular case, the group that's in the normal realm, has to move close in to soak it all. And then there is another one called Sundered Doom, where, or Sundering Doom, where the other side have to move in and the side that was previously moved in have to move out. So you'd also be able to check on this one if people are moving as they should. If you can see someone on either of those who's just stood where they are and not making any efforts to move into it, then again, that might explain why there's a lot of unnecessary damage going out and you'd be able to say, well, that's because you weren't moving in as you were supposed to or you didn't move in quickly enough. It can also be useful for checking during someone's death. Of course, you can check someone's death log and we'll be looking at that more next week. But sometimes a replay helps you see if their movement or targeting had something to do with it. So I've got targeted one of our hunter alts here or a social, I can't actually remember. It's not one of our mains, don't worry. So this is just before the point at which they die. And we can see they're all the way back here and they've got a spear of anguish. So, of course, the issue with the spears when you're targeted, you want to move away from other players, but it hurls a spear and it's going to knock you back a little bit. Now, we're on a platform here, so what could actually happen is, and I'll put it on times five, and I can see this is exactly what has happened. Uh, it's a fairly common issue, is that they've been hit by the spear and knocked back off the platform. So what will have actually killed them is not a great deal at all. They're slowly falling down and then that's them gone off the platform. So you'd be able to see at this point, okay, well, you need to position yourself up against something solid so that when you get knocked back, you don't get knocked back off the platform. So you can also, as I say, investigate deaths where, because all would have shown upon a death log there is they died. Uh, it wasn't slowly to a particular dot or some damage from the boss or standing in a ground effect. They just died. And this sort of thing can help explain that in terms of their positioning. So just to finish off, I'm just going to show something else that could be really useful for. This is on a wipe for Sisters of the Moon on Mythic mode. So I'm just going to click on Replay. And one of the key things about this fight is that you switch phase according to a plan and a direction, not just randomly because of the way Mythic works. So what you should start to see is people forming up in group according to their group. So for example, my group was here. We can see me there. Other people should have been roughly on this side because the phase comes in from the right-hand side across. Initially, there's one particular group that would move across into it. So at this point, the group before us is going across to phase change themselves. They're all having to do it fairly quickly. So what we're looking for is that everyone in that group moves at roughly the same time within a second or two and then I'm sort of moving back here because the phase is that you can't see it here but the phase is actually getting quite close and I'm having to move back out of melee range actually in order to uh, not phase it too quickly because we get a debuff which uh, means that we're going to be taking extra damage so we have to let it wear off before we can move across or at least our group and then at some point we'll get a call there. We've got the call for our group to do it. And we need to see that our group is moving across all at the same time to phase as quickly as possible, which is what you want. So if you were to see at this point someone straggling behind, like Corporal Jones from Dad's Army, then that would be creating a problem for us. And that's one of the key things that wipes you on this fight. Similarly, there's another feature on this fight, and this applies just as much to Heroic as it does to Mythic, which is when we get the Healing Absorb, and we all need to stack up in healing effects to get rid of that. So we'll wait for this to occur. 
And there we go. At this point, we've got the embrace of the eclipse. So what we should be doing is grouping up so that we can have that removed from us really quickly and then get back out there. We can see people sort of moved in um, and it's worn off. We could just sort of check that it has worn off everyone. There's still a little bit left there. Maybe they're a little bit slower in or got a bit less direct healing. But generally speaking, it's worn off people. And then we'll be free to move back out again into our relative positions for the groups so that again we can start on the phase changes so we don't go across at the wrong time. So there we go. Hopefully that introduces you to a few of the really great features of the replay function. It's absolutely something that I would use if I were you on a regular basis. And as I say, it can be used for two different things. First of all, seeing how someone else does that fight from a positioning and a targeting point of view. But also you can use it to see if people in your own raid are moving or positioning as they should and especially targeting the correct mobs at certain times as well. So thanks for watching. If you found it useful, don't forget to subscribe for further content and until next time, I'll see you later.